I think it's a mixture of both, the military and my upbringing, having lost my father at a young age, trying to really figure out what's going on, um, breaking things down, why am I feeling like this? And in the military as well, your emotions being exposed on almost a daily basis, especially when you're on operations in Afghanistan, Iraq, wherever you may be. People look at me and they see my TV work and they think that I'm emotionally disconnected. It's the opposite. It's because I'm so emotionally connected that I can go, right, actually, I'm not gonna use this emotion for this because I know the outcome of it. So I'm gonna park that up. I'm gonna take this route because I've exposed my emotions so many times that I understand them. I know when they're coming, I can understand other people's emotions because I've been there and I've done it. I'm very emotionally connected, not only to myself, but I know when other people, I know what other people are feeling at a certain time because I've been there and done it. It's just a way of breaking it down. You know, I'm honest with myself. I'm completely honest with myself. So I know when I'm scared and I go, right, I'm scared. That's what I need to do. I need to take a step back. I have a look to my teammates. I need to gain some strength in order to tackle this task. And that in itself is courage, you know, just to be honest with yourself, to say that you're scared, especially an ex-Special Forces operator. Yeah. When, I was on, when I was on operations, I remember going, I was point man in the special boat service. And I think it was my third op, went in massive shitstorm. You know, went into this after a bad guy. And I can remember running into the compound and all hell broke loose. You know, it was really, really, really bad. And I ran up to the door, we managed to breach the compound and I ran up to a doorway and I stood by the doorway and some rounds started coming through the door, bullets started coming through the door. So I thought, here we go again, really high octane stuff. And I can remember just thinking, right, Ant, you've been here before, wait for the natural pause of the weapon, wait till you hear the pause and boom, go in, you know, breach that door and get the drop on someone. I knew that the way that I was trained, the way that I moved, the way that I think, that I'd always have to drop on the person. You know, I always believed that in my head. So and I can just remember thinking, right, natural pause is weapon, go. And as I went to go, I couldn't move. I remember just thinking that it's literally seconds before brrr, the round started again. I can just remember thinking, man, how get grip yourself, right? When the natural pause of the weapon goes again, you go into, into the door. And that's what happens. They put it on automatic, they fire a burst and they have to let their finger off the trigger to bring the weapon down. Um, so second time around, natural pause, I go to go in and again, I'm, I'm literally stuck to the ground. You know, the lads are pushing me as well. And I'm like, you know, I can't move. And I can remember thinking to myself, grip, fear has got a grip of you. It's what fear does. Extreme fear sticks you to the ground. It, it, it freezes you. No matter how many people are trying to move you or push you, you just can't go. I'll always remember this and I get goosebumps talking about it. All my power done behind me, the, the, the rawest form of communication is touch. And all he done is he reached around, because I was at the door, he reached around, he grabbed my shoulder and he squeezed it twice. He just squeezed it really softly, not on aggressive, no, because it just, just a real, as if to say, brother, listen, I know exactly what you're going through, but rest assured, the moment you go through that door, I'm gonna be right there behind you to take that bullet, to finish the job if you don't do it, to drag you out there if you get hit. And I can remember that squeeze on the shoulder, everything left me. I can, it almost as if my body just purged of all emotion, of all fear, and I was myself again. And obviously we went in the door, got the job done, done what we needed to do. But when I got back, I, it made me realize, so I broke things down. I, first of all, I was honest, I was like, shit, scared. Of course I was stuck to the, you know, bullets going through, yeah, of course, right, boom, I can acknowledge that, process it, move on, that's done. After that, it was teamwork. But when the, everything is against you, you know, you look around, you see who's there. That's what teamwork is all about. Exposing your emotions, repeating that process and understanding not only your emotions, but understanding yourself. And that's why emotions are so, so important because all of our emotions are all different. Your emotions ultimately are you. And the more you expose your emotions, the more you're gonna learn about them. And the more you learn about them, the more you're gonna learn about yourself. And then the more you learn about yourself, the more you're gonna grow, the better version of yourself you're going to become. So when these fearful situations came along, I always jumped in there, I thought, right, boom, boom, because no matter the outcome, that exposure, exposure, repetition, repetition, you're always gonna learn something. And that's what I say with people with their emotions. You know, some people experience something and they're so fearful of it that they never revisit it again. Therefore, they're never gonna learn about themselves. So it has this massive knock-on effect and only because I've been in those situations and forced in those situations that I can really emotionally connect, not only with myself, but with others. I get my buzzes from my family. I get my buzzes from getting my priorities straight. You know, when I was in the military, I prioritized the military. That was my life. I look back on it and I didn't think at the time that I did. I thought I always prioritized my family, but I never, I prioritized the military. I get a buzz about prioritizing my family now, about getting those priorities right. You know, there's one common denominator. Anytime I've come off of operations, my family has always been there.
So I get a buzz out of these new challenges. I get a buzz out of seeing my children smile, seeing my children, you know, being able to afford to put my children through private education, being able to afford to bring them on holiday. Now, my buzzes I find differently because I think differently. They're two different worlds. The military world and society are two different worlds. So you have to rewire your brain to think, right, if someone's violent, oh, I've got to step away. It just goes against everything that you've been taught, everything that you've been trained to do. It's the same with aggression. You know, if someone's aggressive to me, you know, I just counter it with extreme aggression because that's what I've been taught how to do. But it's, it's not the way to do it in society. Two different worlds. Ultimately, it's about rewiring your brain, the way that you think, the way that you've been trained, and ultimately understanding that when you leave the military, you step into a different world. You have to act like a civilian, your everyday person in order to fit in. It's like that the other way around. That's why you go through military training. You think about it that way, it's, it's exactly that. You just need to be trained and think differently. I'm in full control of my mind. I'm in full control of the way I think. I find that so liberating that I'm in charge of the way that I think. And I say to people, you can take everything away from me. My arms and legs, and I truly believe there's one thing you can never take from me, and that's the way that I think. And I find that extremely liberating. That's what liberates me, that's what frees me. I'm in control, I can think differently, and you might not agree with me, but I find that really, really liberating. When it comes to the negativity, a negative person, I normally just cut them off, let them deal with their problems because we have a horrible tendency to take on other people's negativity. And that's what negative people will do. They're trying to define you by your weakness. They're trying to define you by your insecurities or by your last failure or by your past. And yeah, we've all got insecurities. We've all got weaknesses. We've all, we've all messed up in life, but that's probably 15, 20% of us. And what about the other 80%, the compassionate side, the loving side, the driven side, the positive side? And we have a horrible tendency of someone highlighting something that we go, oh, hits a nerve, and we allow their negativity to completely engulf our positivity. But when you're honest with yourself and you can know and you're in charge of this, you can just bat it off. I'm very good at bringing the positives forward and learning from the negatives. I never bring any negative forward because it's not going to do you any good. I'm very, very good at bringing forward the positives and cutting out the negatives and moving forward in my, with, with what I have to do. And I do that with everything that I do. No regrets in life at all. And I don't think that we should have any regrets in life because we're here. It should be lessons or positives. And that's how really how I look at life. And I do do that. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not this positive guru that goes around fist pumping everyone, going, woo, positivity, and <laughs> goes around sp sprinkling positive. But um, in every approach that I take, everything that I, I always look at the glass half full. If you tackle a negative situation with a negative mindset, you're going to have a negative outcome. And over time, you train your mind to think positively. That's the default mindset that I have, is to tackle everything with positivity. Well, the default mindset for a lot of people is they tackle everything with negativity. <gasps> what could go wrong? What if this happened? I don't. I think differently. Okay, so when a negative situation does come along, I deal with it there and then.